I'd like to take a few minutes and show you how I use SnapArt in my workflow. Whenever I'm going to make a digital painting out of a regular photograph, one of the things I need to do is increase the shadow detail and highlight detail to get as much information out of the image as possible. This would not produce a very desirable effect in a photograph, but works very well in a painting. So one of the first things I do is I do a shadow highlight adjustment which opens up all of the detail within the image. Once I've done this, then I'm ready to go to SnapArt. This is the SnapArt interface. I like this interface and I like the way it works. Um, it comes with a quite an extensive selection of presets. Unfortunately, most of these are not applicable for what I'm doing. But there are a few that I like to use. Um, one is colored pencils. And this gives you a little example of what it looks like. And it has a lot of uh, versatility and, and can create some very interesting results. Um, this is another one I like. And oil paint is the one I use most frequently. Now, once you've used one of these and done all the adjustments over here, you can then adjust, uh, save the adjustments. And these are some of the ones that I have saved that I sort of like the way they work. Which gives me a starting point for when I go to work on a new piece. I don't have to go through all of these and try and figure out what I like. And this is a nice feature. It speeds up the process a little bit and helps you develop your own personal style and look for your work. Now the great thing about this piece of software is that, that this is just a starting point. If I pick this and uh, now I'm, I, re, I will start to work on it, I come on over to this, these panels here and I have tremendous control over this. The things I use most frequently are the overall brush size and photorealism. I'm just going to move these to their opposites so you can see that's about the most dramatic effect you can get and you can go in the other direction with a small brush and move forward out and, and you can get something like this which is very representational of the original work. I like going someplace in the middle um, so usually I like having a fairly big brush because then it looks like a painting so I'll move that around until I get that where I want it to be then I may So that looks pretty good to me. Now once you've done that, you can go in and you can adjust the color. Now this is a little low on saturation for me. I'm going to warm it up a bit, increase the saturation, and try and get a little bit more contrast in the image. But the slide is a very responsive. I like this temperature one down here where I can warm up the scene or I can cool off the scene. It works very nicely. Now, it tries to replicate the substrate or the canvas that you're working on. Um, I really don't have a lot of use of this because I print on canvas or in textured papers, so I don't need this. But if you're printing on a regular photographic paper, this would make your paint strokes and your paper interact also provides highlights on the uh, stroke edges so it looks like there's a side light on the image um, very impressive it works extremely well but it just doesn't apply to what I'm doing so I usually turn these down all the way and you can pick whatever substrate you're using I usually go with uh, a cold pressed paper paper with very little detail these are the highlight settings, and I take these down. You can actually change the direction, the angle. It's very, very interesting. It really works well, but it isn't desirable for what I'm doing at this particular time. Uh, I find the vignette is almost useless. Um, you can make a much better vignette in Photoshop with more control, so I usually don't use this at all. Now there's a layer one here, and I'm going to go into this in another video, and this layers palette is really what makes this piece of software work. What allows us to do is to go in and change 
how much of the effect takes place in other areas of the photograph. Really important, and that's why I want to hold it out for another tutorial. So once we get done, we just hit OK. And then this shows us the result. Oops, I got to go down one. That's the original. And here's the result of what we just did. Now I have some other ones that I've done here that I'm going to run through just so you can see how dramatically different results that we can get from the same image. And that's pretty impressive. Um, none of these adjustments took me more than 15 minutes to get it where I wanted it to be. Um, and what I like about it is it, it doesn't have the repeating pattern that most pieces of software have and allows me to go in and change areas of the image so I can get a completely different look in those areas. It's a very impressive little piece of software and I really like it.